Good to see you, man. It's good to see you too. Richie Fiore, welcome back to WDHA and All Mixed Up. Thank you so much, man. And are we ever mixed up today? <laughs> well, you and I were just talking before you came on the, the air with me. You've got snow already in Colorado. Yeah, we do. But I'm looking out my window right now, and it's all it's the way it happens. It's all melted. But boy, when it happens, it's like anybody else. If you're not ready for it, man, it can be a, it can be a fun little trip. <laughs> well, we had 80 degrees last Saturday, and uh, we've been in the 50s for the most part the past few days. No snow in the forecast that I know of out here in New Jersey. Yeah, well, I was in Boston on Saturday morning, and it was 80 there. But flying home, man, it dropped down to below 30. <laughs> Well, one of the things we are looking forward to here in New Jersey comes on November 18th. It is the Legends of Country Rock Show featuring Firefall, Pure Prairie League, and Richie Fury. Richie, tell us about this show, how it came about. Well, um, I know that uh, Firefall uh, has been doing quite a few of these things over the last couple of years. And uh, usually Poco has been on it, but with Rusty and Paul now not with us anymore, you know, I think they started looking for something else. And and so our, our agent, Bruce Houghton, uh, just thought maybe, you know, maybe I would like to try some things. So we, we're, we're going to give an, it, it's going to be an experiment. It'll be <laughs> the guinea pigs are coming up here. man. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, my, my daughter, Jesse and, and uh, Jesse Lynch and Dan Scott and I are going to play about four or five acoustic songs. And then Firefall Fall is going to come out and back me up on, on three more of the familiar songs that everybody uh, is aware of. So it, it should be fun, you know, and I hope it all works works out that's great and i assume you're doing music from all over the uh course of your career well pretty much you know i mean it's real i mean but when we were just back east last week playing shows you know i was doing close to two hours again which is a lot for an old man like me you know <laughs> but uh, um and, and so you, you you can even then i'm looking at the set list golly i wanted to play this wow i wanted to play it. well we should have oh well we could have what and so now when i get five songs to do a, a, you know with my acoustic set we'll put them all in and then we do three more with firefall you know that are real familiar so there's eight songs all together and i'm used to playing probably 14 or 15 in a set so but that's how it is when you're on a bill with you know several different acts you know, you talk about getting older, and I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to the new album from the Rolling Stones, Hackney Diamonds. Richie, it is such a good record, and you know, you wonder how are they doing it at this stage of their career. It's as strong an album as they've done in a long, long time. Wow, that's that's awesome. I'm going to have to check it out. I have not heard it. <laughs> uh, um, Paul McCartney is on it, Lady, Lady Gaga, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, and just the energy that they still have after all these years, just incredible. That great? Man, that's awesome. I mean, I mean, I think we all thought at one point in time, you know, the Beatles would be the, the complete group at this day and age, you know, and the Stones, well, you know, hey, man, but here the Stones are, that's awesome, man, that's great. I'm glad to hear it. I can't wait. With your excitement, I'm going to go check that out for sure. Richie Fiore, my guest this morning here at 105.5 WDHA. Over the past couple of weeks, I keep seeing on my Facebook page uh, different Buffalo Springfield pages. Not that I'm a member of, but it's one of those suggested for you. And I was such a huge <laughs> fan of the band. So I keep going down these Buffalo Springfield rabbit holes. And one of the things that gets me about that band, Richie, is that no matter who was in the group, no matter who was recording because it, sometimes you guys were augmented by studio musicians right. there was a certain sound to that band that lasted from the first record all the way to the end and i was never quite able to put my finger on exactly what it was but that sonic quality of buffalo springfield mm -hmm. that still sounds fresh all these years later Wow. Well, I, I think there's several things, you know, to take into consideration there, even though, yes, we had, um, I mean, if Steven was doing a song, he may have a, a different drummer or a different some, bass player, somebody come in, Neil, you know, he sure was out there with Jack Nitsche doing a lot of uh, different things. Uh, but there was always the voice, you know, and so that one voice was, you, you know, you could sort of distinctively hear Steven's voice, Neil's voice, my voice. Um, and then, of course, the different guitars, um, you know, that might be part of it. But, yeah, after the very first record, there were quite a few of the songs that were done individually and then just compiled later on, even on the second record. You know, the first record was the only record that we all recorded together. And then after that, it was like, well, you know, it was just a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, you mentioned the voice and and I think, you know, whether it was you harmonizing with Steven or you mm-hmm. harmonizing with Rich, um, Richie, you are Richie, uh, with mm-hmm. Neil, there was you knew who you were listening to. It was definitely Buffalo Springfield. The yeah. same thing I think could be said, Richie, with Poco, no matter who was in the lineup. And there were different guys coming in and out over the years. And even after you left and uh, and Timmy and uh, Rusty were still there, it still sounded like Poco. Yeah, uh, it, it's amazing. Well, it just goes to show you, you know, just what contribution that everybody made early on and carried it on. And of course, Rusty carried it on, you know, right up until his passing a couple years ago. And and uh, I really, you know, I have to say that Rusty was the one that set Poco apart from every other three guitar rock and roll band in Los Angeles at the time. When we wanted to do the country rock. We wanted to add a country instrument and all. And he's the one that really separated us there. But um, yeah, I mean, there, there were distinct voices, you know, all the way through everyone, you know, they, they were voices that were recognizable. If you were a fan, you could tell, okay, well, that's Richie singing, or that's Paul Cotton singing, or that's Timothy, you know, whoever it was, um, you, could, you could tell. Um, by the same token, when you get to the Souther Hillman Fure band, and this yeah. just dawned on me recently, great <laughs> songs, great writers, but there was no one sound to that band. Why do you think that was? I don't know. Uh, the, the, there, there was a lack of cohesiveness, and I think all of us would probably agree to that. You know, Chris and JD and I, all three would probably agree to it. I, I, re- I really don't know. We were all... I think we were all individually stylized when we tried to come together, whereas Poco, we were starting, we just generated what it was with Buffalo Springfield. It just generated what it was. But we, but, you know, J.D. brought his whole style of music. Chris brought his in and I brought mine in and we couldn't quite get, you know, that hand in a glove kind of feeling but i i know what you mean i mean it's not that the songs weren't you know weren't there and they weren't good it was just these are it was almost like three different guys just playing you know their their own music in a a band (laughs) yeah that's what it sounded like to me as a listener yeah and and and, you know it it was interesting you know when we talked to david geffen because he's the one that helped put us all together um uh, you know, it really looked good on paper, it looked great on paper. You know, here you got Chris and JD and myself, you know, and then you got Al Perkins and, and Jim Gordon and Paul Harris, bless his heart. He just passed away last week. Um, uh, you know, but it, it was a, it was a great band, but sometimes what looks good on paper doesn't necessarily pan out to be what everybody wanted it to be, you know, and, or thought it was going to be. And I just think that there was, it was just two individual uh individually we were it was just we, we were we were just separate we didn't connect that way and we didn't have enough time to actually develop that if it was going to happen you know i mean things were going on in my life that i just I, I i had i couldn't even stick with the band after two records things were just crazy in my life that i had to make a priority what i was going to do and so we never got a chance to really develop what maybe the souther hillman fure sound could have been <laughs> Talking with Richie Fure this morning here at 105.5 WDHA, November 18th, Mayo Performing Arts Center, The Legends of Country Rock. Richie, along with Firefall and Pure Prairie League. Let me go back to uh, Buffalo Springfield just for a second. If memory serves correct, you didn't write anything on the first album, and yet mm-hmm. you're all over it. I mean, it's there's a definite Richie Fure contribution to it. But when you finally decided to start presenting songs, and you have two strong personalities, two strong songwriters, and Stephen... <laughs> And Neil, what was that like for you? Well, uh, you know, it, it all happened kind of um, uh, by chance. I was waiting. I mean, how I started to get songs really con- to contribute on the album. Um, and, and I was waiting for the guys to come to the studio one day. And I just sit out playing uh, in the studio, getting acoustic sound and singing Sad Memory. And Neil happened to pop in and heard me do it. And he said, we got to record that. <laughs> and I said, well, we just did, you know, and he just put a guitar on. And then, with, you know, from there, it, it just became kind of, um, I don't know, there was a natural flow. There was, a, there was nothing that was ever said, well, now you can contribute to the record. It's just, you know, that was just what happened along the way, you know, that um, 
Stephen and Neil very prolific, obviously. You mm -hmm. know, they were very prolific writers at the time. And I have to say that I, I, I learned an awful lot from, from Stephen just listening to him sitting in that little room on Fountain Boulevard, you know, in Los Angeles as we were learning all of the songs that he wrote that appeared on the first record and, and, and all. But, um, you know, there those were the, the songs that were on the first record were certainly the songs that should have been on the first record. There's no doubt about it. And a second one, you know, things just developed and, and I just happened to get my songs in, you know. I mean, I, I was definitely developing my craft a little bit later than what they had already been doing. I know there's a documentary on your career that's being worked on, Cameron Crowe, a big part of it. What can you tell us about where it is in the development stage right now? Boy, I'll tell you what, I, I think, you know, well, two things have slowed it down. COVID, you know, we started working on it before COVID hit. And when COVID hit, everything went down. And the other thing is interviews. I mean, every time you turn around, David's got, well, I've got another, it's going to be this guy or this guy or this. And it's like, I, I never dreamed of half the people that would even be contributing interviews uh, to, to the project. And that slowed it down a little bit. And of course, you know, we, we've been uh, working on getting the finances, but it looks like next year, absolutely for sure, it better come out. <laughs> I don't know, man, I want to I wanna see it. You know what I mean? Um but it was just special, you know, having David Stone and, and Denny Klein, you know, feel that uh, there was something worthy of a, of of their time and effort and and all to put together, uh, you know, something that has to do with my life. It's going to be a little different story than maybe, you know, uh, the normal rock and roll guy that has a has a documentary out. You know, I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. We talk to people that maybe I didn't get along with. You know, they had some other comments. I mean, so it's going to be a pretty uh, interesting and insightful piece that I think, you know, anybody that's interested in my life story is going to find it interesting. Uh, you know, the rock and roll guy, you know, that goes to become a pastor and then comes back and starts playing music again. And it's, um, you know, it's going to be and who's been married for 56 years to the same, you know, that's woman. incredible. So, that story uh, alone, Richie, is amazing. I mean, it, 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 it's an amazing story. And those guys saw they saw the, you know, the what they felt was the importance of it. And so, yeah, it's coming out. It is coming out next year. And I'm just really thankful for all of the people that already have contributed. And I know David has one more interview uh, scheduled, I think, uh, next week, if it hasn't been postponed one more time. But um and it's a pretty it's a pretty important one that I didn't think that it would ever happen, but um, it's it, it's happening. <laughs> and you can't tell us who it is, can you? Well, it's David Geffen. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, but I mean, you know, with with David and his health right now, and however that's going to fall into place, and and then David, you know, hey, listen, this guy travels around, and he's you know he's but. He said, yes, I want to do this. And so one way or another, that would, if, if it's held up because of, uh, of, of any kind of issue with David on his, on his health or, you know, whatever. But right now it is scheduled, I think, for next week. And you can find out all things Richie Fure on his website, including the <laughs> film and how you can contribute at RichieFure.com. And again, November 18th, Mayo Performing Arts Center, the legends of country rock with uh, Richie, Firefall and Pure Prairie League. Richie, always good to catch up with you. And I can't wait to see this show. Oh, great, Jim. Well, I'm sure looking forward to seeing you, man. And thank you so much. You've always been a, a big support and a friend. And I really, uh, really appreciate that, man.